Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about the line integral of a scalar function. So there's a couple things you need to know before you can do this, so let's get those out of the way. First, you need to know what a scalar function looks like. And those kind of look like the functions you're familiar with from multivariable um, calculus. So you either get f of x, y, or you get f of x, y, z. Um, see either of those, you know you're doing the line integral of a scalar function, which is different from the line integral of a vector field. So you definitely need to make that identification. Uh, you also need a parameterized path that you're going to um, integrate over. So those will look like uh, c of t is uh, x of t, y of t, or in three dimensions, x of t, y of t, z of t. I call it c of t for curve. Um, you also see r of t sometimes. And I mean, I guess you could really see anything. Uh, but c of t and r of t, I think, are the two most common. You need to know when to start your curve and when to end. So you need a t0 and a t1. And then you also just need to know what a line integral is. So you have to remember this part also. It's the integral. Um, so it looks weird when you're like flipping through a calculus book, you see these integrals and they all have these little C's underneath them. So it's the integral along C of f of x, y, z, ds. If it's two dimensional, just the Z parts all just are zero, so they don't impact anything. Um, so it's the integral along C of f of x, y, z, ds. And so that S is a little weird. That's like an arc length type thing. Equals, um, so our T bound, the integral from our T bounds, T0 to T1, F of, just substitute in your functions for X of T, Y of T, Z of T. And then DS is, um, it's actually kind of like uh, the, the norm of uh, like the derivative of C of T, if you think of it as a vector, uh, but it's the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared plus z prime squared and then dt so that's ds the biggest mistake i see students make is they forget to calculate ds and they just uh, do the integral of f of x of t y of t z of t dt so don't make that mistake and you'll actually probably be fine um let's let's do some examples so f of x y z is x squared plus y squared plus z squared c of t is given to us and that's pretty nice so it's cosine of t, sine of t, t, and then we're going from zero to pi. So we actually know everything that we need and we can kind of just jump in and do the problem. So first, I like to write down just the general form of this thing. So it's the integral along c of f of x, y, z, ds. Once you write that down, you can kind of remember what you need to be substituting. So it's gonna be, we have x, y, and z, the integral from, so our t bounds are zero to pi. And now we need to do some substitutions, right? We need to change f into basically a function of t. And we can do that because we know what x, y, and z are. So it's gonna be, I need to substitute for x, and that's cosine, so I'm gonna get cosine squared of t. I need to substitute for y, so I'm gonna get plus sine squared of t. And I need to substitute for z, but z is just t, so I'm gonna get plus t squared. Okay, so that's, the end of um, substituting into f. So I'm gonna close this parenthesis, and now I worry about ds. So ds, is, it's usually a long radical, so what I like to do is just kinda of like start the radical, write all the stuff, and then close the radical by putting the, uh, the top part of the symbol. So I need dx dt, so x is this, dx dt is negative sine of t, and then square it. So negative sine of t squared, and then I need uh, dy dt. So the derivative of sine is cosine, so plus cosine squared. And then uh, dz dt, so the derivative of t is one, square that you get one, so plus one, close radical. And now our variable is t, so dt. And we're basically done, we just need to remember that sine squared plus cosine squared is one, and then uh, remember the fundamental theorem of calculus. So this becomes uh, one plus t squared. And then we have radical, uh, that's another one, and one plus one is two, so just radical two, dt. That actually happens a surprising number of times that uh, ds just kind of is a, a constant and a dt. Uh, so this, I'm gonna pull out the radical two, I'm gonna integrate this thing, so I get t plus one third t cubed uh, from zero to pi. And then when you plug in pi, you get radical two, pi plus pi cubed over three. When you plug in zero, you just get zero. So we're done. Uh, I wanna do one more example in this video, uh, and it's a little bit different. 
So we have f of xy, so it's only two dimensional, which is nice, is the square root of one plus nine xy. And instead of being given a parameterized curve, we're gonna have to parameterize it. So we have y equals x cubed and x goes from zero to one. So we need to write our own parametrics for this curve, but it's nice because y is a function of x. I have the option of just making x be t, which is definitely what you wanna do here. So I'm gonna let x be t, if x is t, then y is t cubed. And then if x is t and x goes from zero to one, then we know that t goes from zero to one. So that's a really common way of parameterizing your curve, um, which is good because it's pretty simple. So let's do our integral. So it's the integral along c of f of x, y, ds. First, you do your substitutions into f of x, y to turn it into a function of t. So it's gonna be the integral from t bounds or zero to one. Um, so it's gonna be radical one plus nine. And then we said that we need to replace x. So x is just t, so t. We need to replace y and y is t cubed, so times t cubed. And then we're done with f. It's now a function of t. So now we deal with ds. ds is that radical. And then um, the derivative of t is one. So that's, I need dx dt. So that's one squared is just one. I need the derivative of t cubed is three t squared. Square that I get nine t to the fourth. So plus nine t to the fourth and then dt. What's interesting about this is if you look at it, the things inside the radicals are the same. They're both one plus nine t to the fourth which means the radical that times radical that is actually just one plus nine t to the fourth. So this will be the integral from zero to one of just the quantity one plus nine t to the fourth dt. Fundamental theorem on this thing. So it's t nine fifths t to the fifth from zero to one. If you plug in one, you get one plus nine fifths. Plug in zero, you get zero. So our final answer is 14 fifths. All right, so that's how we can deal with the line integral of a scalar function. Two examples, one where you're given the parameterization, the other one you have to come up with it on your own, um, but we were able to use that uh, pretty standard procedure where y was a function of x, so let x equal t, and then you have no choice about what y is, and you know the bounds. All right, I hope you uh, found this helpful, and good luck.